the Great Smokies. When I left my city home to be a school teacher at a backwoods mission, I dreamed of adventure. I wasn't ready for the real challenges of life in these mountains. I'd have given up, if not for the children. I came to Cutter Gap to teach, but they show me every day that I am here to learn. Winter in the mountains. I had expected to stay indoors and hibernate like a bear. But there were afternoons when the cold air was so exhilarating that it made me want to explore. And that was how I discovered it. Hello? Anybody here? It was unlike any mountain cabin I had seen. Everything had its place. Someone had taken the greatest care. Hello? Anybody here? Come snooping or to visit? I'm sorry. I called up from the yard. Oh, I, I heard you. Screeching and yammering. You're the teacher, ain't you? Yes. I'm Christy Huddleston. Mm, you smell real pretty. I tell you, home. Everybody's in a hollering mood. I didn't expect to find you visiting. We were just meeting. Jed Holm that paid me in beans. Will you take some for me? You take time to boil them up right. Can you stay a spell? Oh, I'm sorry. I've been up all night with Jed's girl, Lily. Her appendix wasn't leaving without a fight. Hmm. Neil, you still have to eat? Well, I could fix you something, if you'd like, before you go to bed. Well, there's an offer that doesn't come my way too often. I guess I'll accept. We can visit some other time? Patty. Miss Huddleston's poking a hand in your direction. Please, come back. <sighs> she has trachoma. She lost her sight completely several years ago. I couldn't imagine living up here alone, much less blind. Ah, oh, people stopping on her. Aunt Hattie knows every song and story in these mountains. A side of meat or a basket of corn trades nicely for a very good yarn. I'm not afraid of a little spice. Is she a real aunt? My father's baby sister. I've never seen her around the cove before. Oh, she stays pretty close to a mountain. Hattie's very set in her ways, like most women I know. I prefer to eat my shells later. Did you want to cook? Actually, I'm quite good in the kitchen. I have no doubt you'll make someone a good wife one day. Did Hattie ever marry? She married Timothy McCabe. Gave him three beautiful children. They all died of typhus. She lost everyone? It was a long time ago. She wouldn't want your pity. Hmm. Tastes good. Sure you wouldn't want some? Now they're expecting me back at the mission. I'll ride you back shortly. 
You're not going to argue and insist you can do it by yourself, are you? It's getting dark soon. I'm on the side of a mountain. Whatever you think of me, Doctor, I'm not a fool. I'd have never thought that. He wasn't his usual difficult self. Why were my feelings so confused about this man? May I help you? I am well acquainted with the beauty of these mountains, but I was not prepared for such elegance. Theodore S. Harlan, essayist, historian, admirer. Alice Henderson. It is Miss Henderson, I do hope. This is the mission at Cutter Gap. It is. Have you business here? Uh, you didn't receive my letter. I, I wrote to make arrangements for my stay, so I assumed... Well, now I am imposing. What is it you want, Mr... Harland. Harland. A few days board while I conduct my research. I'm, I'm delighted to pay. I'm afraid you've been misinformed. This is not a hotel. But I, I, I am in the midst of a, a most important academic undertaking, a, an oral history of these mountains. I believe it is vital that this culture be preserved. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? Yes. Good. I am gathering material so that places like Cutter Gap will not, in effect, perish from the earth. Your hospitality would be a godsend. Allow me. The folklore of these hollows, by its own nature, demands to be shared. Why? What is the first thing that outsiders think about mountain people? That they are whiskey-drinking, gun-toting hillbillies with nothing better to do than to shoot at one another. But what they've missed, what they don't see, is their kindness of spirit, their strength, their fierce loyalty, the traditions they share. The very heart and soul of these mountains lie in their stories and in their songs. And I mean for the world to hear the truth. You are eloquent, Mr. Uh, Har Harland. Harland. Yes. I think that's a wonderful project. Uncle Bog would be happy to share his stories, and Hattie Dr. McNeil says that she knows every mountain song. And we've talked about having a musical gathering ever since the piano arrived. Please do not allow your work to disrupt our neighbors' lives. They mustn't be made to feel like they are curiosities. You have my assurance, madame. <sighs> These people have my utmost respect. Marvelous. Dear God, Margaret, I'm alive. Margaret.
So much has changed. I don't know where to begin. They probably noticed the new church and school building. Everyone is so proud. And we have a new telephone line to El Pano Station. Maybe you noticed it downstairs. It... Telephone and cut a gap of all places. I had almost forgotten how the hair shines so. It is a miracle. My faith deserted me. I could never allow myself to believe that they might be alive. When we couldn't find thee, and Neil kept searching and searching, it was I who told him to give it up. Neil, has thee? I wanted to see you first. May I stay here tonight? I'll, I'll sleep on the floor. I sleep on the floor whenever I travel. It's, I'm accustomed to it. I am sorry. It's just I'm so happy to see thee. Mother, I need to explain. No, not now. Yes, I do. Please don't stop me while I have the nerve. It was an ugly thing to do. Allowing you to think I was dead. I know how much that must have hurt you. But I just had to get away from here. I did think about writing so many times. Why did they not? I knew you'd come looking for me. It was easier if everyone believed I had drowned. It was never easy. <coughs> <coughs> Margaret? Fine. These damn things. How has they come here? Teddy. Um, Theodore Harland. I made him hide the wagon down the road. I saw the mission and I just needed some time. I wanted to make sure that I could do this. Face you, Ken. Teddy's from Atlanta. That's where I've been. Atlanta. City suits me, don't you think? But you never approved of my clothes, did you? None of that matters. Thy light has come back into my life. Vision of loveliness. What better way to start the day? Is Miss Alice here? I thought I heard her. No, I'm afraid not. I was forced to breakfast alone. <laughs> and Ruby May's cooking does leave a bit to be desired. Miss Huddleston? This is my daughter, Margaret.
Mother's not introducing us because we already know each other. Yes, I am most grateful to your daughter for having brought me here. And I'm certain that this trip is going to be far more valuable than what I paid her. In spiritual terms, of course. <laughs> and you must be the teacher. I'm pleased to meet you. I don't understand. Oh, it's a terribly long story, but I'm sure Mother will catch you up. Mm -hmm. God, you're so young. How do they expect someone to teach about life when they haven't even lived it? The children here are especially fond of Miss Huddleston, and she of them. Well, I'm, I'm sure you're probably far better at it than I would ever be. Lord knows they need something around here to keep them busy. Did I tell you they wanted me to teach? Can you imagine me with all those little ones? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Has anybody sent for your husband? I'll look after my own affairs, thank you. I'm sure you'll have your hands full with the children. <clears throat> She's pretty. Except for those funny clothes. She's haunting the doctor because he didn't give her no funeral. He never buried her, so they found a body. <gasps> Lori, preacher's touching her. Teacher, reckon my grandma who died is walking around like her? No, little girl. Your grandmother's in heaven with God. There are no such things as ghosts. It's very kind of you. I'm most grateful for the escort. Miss Hattie's cabin's hard to find. I only happened upon it by accident. Where is she? I know this must be a shock. Don't you, dear? Only you could do something this hateful. You are dead to me, woman. Neil. You are dead! John, do you write down all of the songs that Miss Hattie sings, even the ones she makes up herself? Oh, yes, sir. I try to get the tune down, too, in my own way. Miss Hattie, it would be a tremendous honor if I could hear them. Mm. Well, I'd be happy to sing some for you. Thank you. Um, 
He took wild mountain laurel and he twined it in her hair. She said she didn't love him. She said she didn't care. He wooed her with pink roses and purple columbine. Did everything he knew to change her mind. Neil? Are you here? It's me, Christy. Are you in there? I'm worried about you. Please open the door. I know you're in there. I just want to talk to you. I know you're upset, but you can't shut everyone else out. Please just let me know you're all right. Do you want to hear the story? It has a happy ending. Yes. Please. When Margaret was a child, she had to have everything her way. And I gave it to her. I was a child myself when she was small. And we play in haystacks, run off to every circus. But and Margaret grew up selfish, always wanting more freedom. And one day, she demanded of me the details of her birth. I told her the truth. She tried to pretend it was glamorous. Bastard child, she called herself. Everything that I believe in, she rejected. Especially God. It was about that time that she met Neil. Neil loved Margaret's rebellion. And he was perfect for her. He came from this wild, far-off place not our quiet Quaker circle. They ran away and got married, and he brought her here. When I understood that Margaret meant to cut all ties, I followed them to cut a gap, uninvited. Thou art surprised. It's just that That's not why I thought you came here. So, I have come down from thy pedestal at last. I knew that Margaret would resent my coming here, but I came ahead. Miss Alice, you can stop if you want. No. No. Soon after I arrived here, I came to see that my daughter's marriage had a deep flaw at its heart. And I... I did not pay heed to how unhappy she was, because I had found a purpose here. I thought she could, too, if only she would try. My joy in my mission blinded me 
to her sadness. I gave that to Margaret on her 10th birthday. And it was a link between us always, even in the bad times. She never took it off. And the night that she... That she the night of the storm. Neil found it all tangled up in a scarf on the riverbank. I now know that she put it there. Oh, they needn't struggle so, Christy. But to let you both think she was dead? My faith was weak. I closed up my heart and I... Her light was taken from me, but she has come back. We have been given another chance. And this time... Oh. Most men would be happy if their wife came back. Maybe you should let the McNeils work it out themselves. Are you telling me what to do? Huh. If I could, would I be saddling Prince right now? Sorry. I'll come back. Did you want something? I was hoping to borrow a horse. Go for a little ride. You can take Prince. I was going to go for a ride, but I've changed my mind. Well, I have a sermon to prepare. Yes, we must keep God waiting. I'll have Prince ready for you in a minute, Mrs. McNeil. Mrs. McNeil? <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. You were going to see Neil, weren't you? Yes. It's all right. There's nothing between us anymore. Don't worry, Neil is the same old, stubborn, arrogant self. He'll be just fine as long as he has his work. His work's important. These people need him very much. He needs them more. But I'm sure you've already discovered that. Hello. Hello, beauty. Yes. You have a nice way. Prince doesn't let just anybody do that. Hmm. I'm not entirely evil, contrary to what everyone thinks. Nobody thinks that. Oh, uh, I am the one who hurt their bonnie Prince Neil. <laughs> you like it here, don't you? Yes. Give it time. Talk to me after you spend a winter or two snowed in. Never able to go anywhere. Surrounded by strangers who you have nothing in common with. Neil was gone for weeks, sometimes. No way of knowing if he was lying dead somewhere. <laughs> Days without anyone to talk to. Miss Alice. <laughs> talk to Mother. My mother, with her these and thou's, who always sees the light. Hmm. Maybe if there'd been someone like you.
Get out of my house. Neil, we have to talk sometime. You have nothing to say that I want to hear. You know, I've changed. I'm still stuck talking to the walls. God. You could have found something. What I wanted was you. Only you were never here. You knew I was a doctor. You knew who you were getting. So did you. Don't look so worried. It's only you and me here. If you wanted a mountain woman, you'd have married one. I'd forgotten how cruel you could be. Why? Why did you marry me, if you didn't love me? I told you to get out. I do not understand. It's really not that difficult, Mother. I'm leaving tomorrow. You didn't think I was going to stay, did you? It's cold out here. Look, I got Harland his damn songs. I had a fight with Neil. You know I'm alive. There's really nothing more for me to do here. I do not believe thee. <sighs> this is pointless. Thou hast come back to me for a reason. I came back to make my peace. And hast thou? What do you want from me? I want thee to be happy. No, you want me to be happy here, Mother. Well, I can't do it. They will never be happy until they can stop running away from their mistakes. They're doing it again. First, they must make peace with thyself. Will you never stop? <coughs> thou art ill. Right. I was doing it again. I promised myself. I'm sorry. Margaret, I know you cannot stay here. It is tuberculosis, is it not? Does Neil know? Why would he care? You must seek treatment. I'll think about it. There's a fine clinic at Asheville. They've had some real success. I want to go there with you. You don't have to be so dramatic. You need to be here. You are the most important to me. There's no one I have ever loved more. Afterwards, you can go wherever you like to. I will not judge. I cannot bear to lose you again.
please allow me to go with you. I need two days to settle things here. We could leave Saturday, if that suits me. If that suits you. Hello? I brought a, a book for the children. It's Grey's Anatomy. Well, we certainly don't have this one. These are good. Very good. Is this meant to be you? I think you came here to discuss art, Doctor. I know you meant well the other day, but sometimes, sometimes talking doesn't help. Running away doesn't help either. I wasn't the one who ran away. I know that Margaret hurt you very badly. I don't know that she's come back. You can't just wish her away. You're married to each other. What we had died a long time ago. It's over, Christy. No, it isn't. And it never will be. Not until you forgive her. Hello? Morning. Sorry to bother y'all so early. I'm looking for Mr. Harlan. He's left already. He went have one last visit with Hattie. Oh. Uh, I ran out of music paper, and I was hoping he'd lend me one more sheet so I could finish this. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Mountain Laurel. Oh, that's Miss Hattie's song. Written by Theodore S. Harland. He was going to publish them all right. Under his own name. He was robbing Miss Hattie and using me to do it. He won't get away with it. John, this is not your fault. Yes, ma'am, it is. When the light breaks through and the day is new, I learn once more to carry on. <laughs> Young Spencer, I didn't expect to see you today. I reckon you didn't. Something wrong, John? This man's been stealing your songs. He fooled me into writing them down, then he put his own name on them. He was going to sell them under his own name. Uh, Ain't that right, Mr. Holland? I was going to take some of them back. Yes, that's true. But only so that people could enjoy them, so they could learn more about your world here. You're a liar. <sighs> You ain't taking those. Oh, boys, boys, these are my material here. Let him go. Now, let him go. This young man attacked me. I was just defending myself. You was robbing Miss Hattie. Hush, John. Mr. Harlan, my songs are a gift from God, and he meant for me to pass them along to others. I reckon if you need my songs so bad, you can have them. Now... I'm gonna go in and get my shawl. 
And I'd be grateful if you'd take me down to the mission for the singing this afternoon. Be my pleasure, Miss Hattie. I'll take those. But Miss Hattie just said... If you steal her songs, you'll have to carry them out in your head. You're not leaving with that music. And just who is going to stop me? I am. If I were you, I wouldn't show my face around here again. Like this in Atlanta. I miss this spot. I didn't think there was anything about the cove that you liked. So the great doctor doesn't really know everything. I didn't come up here looking for you so that we could fight. I was just remembering the first time you brought me here. The day Great Aunt Spencer died. I've never seen you like that. You were always so in control. I've known her all my life. Every person you lost took a piece out of you. I was always afraid there wouldn't be anything left for me. It made me want to die. That's why I had to leave. Your mother told me about the tuberculosis. You understand you must get treatment. I said I was going. I'm glad you're taking her with you. You know mother. Alice loves you very much. What went wrong with us, Neil? You were never one to lead your life by anybody else's rules. I seem forever bound by them. Maybe that's why I fell in love with you. We just had no right getting married. <laughs> 